Wait, hold up. Kindred mid isn't troll? Sign me up for that. Unless he's taking my scuttle crabs, then absolutely not. Hey guys, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. In this video, we're going to run you through some sleeper new OP builds for patch 10.12. My name is Irene and I'll be running you through 10 new builds that you have to watch out for. We're covering several different roles, so make sure you stay tuned. By the way, I wanna let you guys know that we've started a Discord community that we want you to be a part of. Make sure to check out the description for a link to join. Come join us, it's a great way to make friends and have meaningful discussion, and to also be the first ones to receive any news we have for you guys. You can also check out ProGuides.com, where we've got live classes with pro players, coaching from pro players, and courses from your favorites like Doublelift. Also, we've got to run you through the question of the day. Which champion, if there is one, do you think you could pick a fight with? While I don't know if I'd win, I'd actually pick Yumi to beat her up because she's so annoying to play against. She needs a nerf. Cats do have nine lives, so I'd be happy to take at least one of them, maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, uh, and let me know your own answers down below. All right, kicking off our video, let's talk about a new top lane build. Phase Rush Gragas has made its way into the top lane. Whether you're going for a hit and run playstyle or chasing opponents down to land that finishing blow, Phase Rush is a pretty solid choice. Gragas doesn't really have any issues activating Phase Rush as his bread and butter combo utilizes three instances of damage. His E, Q, and a W empowered basic attack usually spells the end of a Gragas' trading pattern, and after activating Phase Rush, he can now zoom right on out of danger. This also means that Gragas is actually much harder to gank. If you approach from behind him, he can body slam you, hit you with the rest of his combo, and immediately book it towards his turret while you're stunned. Ultimately, you're giving up a little bit of burst damage, but in return, you're going to be much safer and much more mobile while playing Gragas. Let's run through those runes and items next. For runes, you want to run Phase Rush, Monoflow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, and then Magical Footwear with Cosmic Insight. For his items, you'll build a Hextech Proto Belt, Sorcerer's Shoes, Rabidon's Death Cap, Zonia's Hourglass, Luden's Echo, and a Void Staff. The order in which you build these items will vary heavily based on your games. Always rush Hextech Proto Belt, however, as this item is a solid foundation for any Gragas build. It provides some extra mobility, burst damage, and even wave clear. This item is extremely cheap and allows you to hit a very early power spike. From there, you can rush a Rabidon's Death Cap for a delayed power spike, but a greater return on subsequent purchases, or a Luden's Echo for an immediate burst in power. Next up is yet another Volibear build. We've been covering these a lot recently in our build videos, but it feels like there's no end to how creative people are. While this one might sound pretty troll, I need you to really bear with me. I can barely comprehend this myself, but you need to build a Hextech Gunblade with Volibear. He's a guy that loves extended fights and relies heavily on dealing damage in order to keep himself alive. This build acts on a synergy that you guys might be familiar with, healing based off of damage combined with Thornmail. To talk about this further, let me run you through all the items first. You want a Hextech Gunblade, Ninja Tabi, Thornmail, Dead Man's Plate, Spirit Visage, and a Hextech Proto Belt. The last item is actually a flex item. We've seen some Volibear players delve pretty deep into the AP Volibear zone with a Proto Belt, but remember that Proto Belt and Gunblade share a cooldown of 40 seconds. So if you want to actually have that Proto Belt for closing the distance, you won't be able to use that Hextech Gunblade active either. So make your choice. You heal off of any damage you deal when you build a Hextech Gunblade. This includes Thornmail damage, so you get the picture. Follow this up with Dead Man's Plate and Spirit Visage and you gain some tank stats, even more healing, and some well-needed mobility, just like any other Juggernaut would love to have. Hextech Gunblade's active comes in handy as well, since it'll allow Volibear to slow an enemy to catch up to them. Another thing I want to mention is that you'll want to max your E with this build. This ability got buffed pretty hard during Volibear's hotfix, and you want to abuse it alongside the active slow you get from Hextech Gunblade, or a Bilgewater Cutlass when you're still working up to that big boy item. For runes, you'll run Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Nimbus Cloak, and Gathering Storm. A lot of players are choosing to run Ignite over Teleport, so supplementing this with Nimbus Cloak will provide Volibear players a ton of extra kill potential through the bonus movement speed. That covers our top lane build, so make sure to take one last look at the screen, because next up is the jungle. In the jungle, we have a new build with Predator Warwick. Warwick is a champion that thrives off of hunting his enemies down, and there's no better keystone to assist him with that than Predator. By running this build, you're giving up a little bit of skirmishing power, but in return, receiving much stronger ganks. Warwick's ultimate's range scales with his movement speed, and extra movement speed can do nothing but help when it comes to reaching his opponents. For runes, run Predator, Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, Ultimate Hunter, and then Celerity and Water Walking. At the end of the day, what's most important for Warwick later into the game is his ultimate, not Predator. 
Although you want to have both available at the same time, the ultimate has more priority and you'll want to take ultimate hunter over ingenious hunter as a result. In light of the decreased cooldown on predator, there's even more incentive to do so. For the items, you want to build a Cinder Hulk with a Stalker's Blade, Titanic Hydra, Mercury Treads, Dead Man's Plate, and a Thorn Mail. Next up in the jungle isn't anything that's too out of the blue, except a blue summoner spell, of course. And no, it's not Clarity. Summoner Ghost on Olaf is back in the jungle. This slowly fell out of the meta as Ghost had a pretty discouraging windup to it. This patch, though, Ghost received a major buff and players are now running it in place of Summoner Flash. Another reason was that players could pick Jarvan, trap Olaf in his Cataclysm, and there was nothing he could do to retaliate. With Ghost stronger and Jarvan a much less popular pick than before, it's time for this build to shine once again. For runes, run Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, and Approach Velocity. Tagging an opponent with a single slow will allow you to rush them down using the immense movement speed bonus from Approach Velocity. For items, build a Warrior Enchant on Stalker's Blade, Spirit Visage, Black Cleaver, Mercury Treads, Death Stance, and a Guardian Angel. Trade out Mercury Treads for Ninja Tabi against heavily stacked physical damage teams. Now let's move on to the mid lane. For this next build, I want to shout out Forest Within for his new Kindred build. That's right, we just finished up with the jungle, so this is a Kindred mid. The concept behind this build is that you're going to have a ton of sustain and still deal an insane amount of damage. Kindred is a great pick into a variety of mid laners, including immobile mages as well as assassins. Kindred's level 3 power spike is absolutely insane. She deals a ton of damage, has great mobility, and has some crowd control with her slow. A long story short, she's able to go for extremely aggressive trades against passive mages and pick up some cheesy kills pretty often. Against assassins, her ultimate does an excellent job of mitigating any burst damage, allowing her to turn any close fights around. Like any marksman, Kindred scales incredibly well, but with this build especially, she'll be even stronger as she's abusing some OP items. Namely, those are Blade of the Ruined King and Death's Dance. But I guess we should name all the items at this point. For the item build, make a Blade of the Ruined King, Berserker's Greaves, Death's Dance, Runan's Hurricane, Mortal Reminder, and an Infinity Edge. If you're playing against a comp stacked with magic damage, trade out the Death's Dance for a Wit's End. You might also want to consider building a Maw if things get excessive, or even trading out Runan's Hurricane for a Phantom Dancer in certain matchups. For some more sustain, you'll also want to run these runes. Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Last Stand, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter. Since we've gotten some help from an expert, let's briefly run you through some tips while running this setup as well. You'll especially want to pick Kindred into melee champions, which, like we mentioned, includes assassins. They're a great lane bully, and certain mages can beat them, however, namely Syndra and Azir. These champions have decent range as well as disengage. You can build a Doran shield and use the sustain built into the runes, as well as following items to get through those matchups. When playing her, make sure to roam with your jungler and mark enemy champions you're roaming towards. Picking up stacks for your passive is still an important part of Kindred's gameplay. As opposed to Kindred jungle, playing Kindred mid gives her some more experience to work with and thus makes her feel stronger than normal. If you guys want to learn more about this Kindred mid build, then make sure to check out Forest Within's Twitch and YouTube channels using the link in the description. He'll also be uploading some Kindred mid content there, so don't miss out on that. Next up in the mid lane is Spellbook Karma. Like you'd expect, she's still a flexible utility mage. She deals great damage, but also provides incredible amounts of utility for her team. Unsealed Spellbook is a nice keystone to have, as Karma doesn't really need to run Comet or Summon Airy to do her job. By taking Spellbook, you can instead run Teleport and cycle through whatever summoner spells you need during the laning phase. Spells like Ignite can provide some extra kill pressure, while Ghost, Barrier, Heal, and even Cleanse can create a comfortable safety net. Running Nimbus Cloak basically makes it so that you're impossible to kill. For runes, run Unsealed Spellbook, Magical Footwear, Minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight, and Nimbus Cloak with Transcendence. For items, you'll want to build an Athene's Unholy Grail, Ardent Sensor, Sorcerer's Shoes, Rabbit on Death Cap, Void Staff, and Zonia's Hourglass. This build alongside Transcendence will still allow you to hit the 40% cooldown reduction mark. Throw in Cosmic Insight and you're golden at 45%. The amount of shields and poke you can throw out at your opponent in the late game ends up being quite oppressive. Late game AP Karma provides so much value in teamfights, and you've even got a Zonius Hourglass to protect yourself from divers. That's going to wrap up the mid lane builds, so make sure to take one last look at the screen for a recap of those. Moving forward, let's talk about bottom lane builds. While we've mentioned this build before in other videos, it's deviated a little bit since last time. Hail of Blades Twitch with Ignite is still pretty solid, but players have switched the items around a tiny bit. First up, you want to run this with a support who can synergize well with Twitch's sneaky nature. 
picks like Lulu and Yumi synergize extraordinarily well with him and do a great job of keeping him alive. In lane, you'll want to poke out opponents and look for cheesy picks on them using your stealth. Otherwise, push in your lane and try to pick up a kill in mid instead. Twitch is an extremely snowball-y champion, and Hail of Blades provides him an insane amount of burst damage. He's able to stack up his passive much faster, get that front-loaded damage, and also means that he has faster contaminate stacks to deal that extra damage. For runes, run Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Zombie Ward, Relentless Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Legend Bloodline. This build does not incorporate a Blade of the Rune King or any lifesteal for that matter, so Legend Bloodline is a must. Relentless Hunter is arguably the best rune on its tier for Twitch. He thrives off of picking off overextended opponents, and Relentless Hunter allows him to quickly traverse the map to make plays everywhere. After all, it honestly feels like he always hits you from the spot you were hoping he wasn't at all. For items, build an Infinity Edge first, then Berserker's Greaves, Runan's Hurricane, Mercurial Scimitar, Essence Reaver, and Immortal Reminder. You get a ton of attack damage as well as critical strike chance with this build, and the Essence Reaver also lowers your cooldown quite significantly. You'll be able to stealth in and out of fights more often and also have your ultimate up much more frequently. If you've been watching our videos, you probably know about the Draven build that came out of nowhere a while back. Monomune was and is a pretty strong item on early to mid game champions. While the initial purchase of a tier can put you behind, finishing up the stacks and upgrading a Monomune into a Muramana is a giant power spike, especially earlier on in games. Perhaps what people miss though is that there's been another champion who can use this build. Lucian with Monomune might be the next big thing here. Considering that Lucian's passive allows him to apply on hit effects twice, it also makes sense that Muramana, known for its incredibly powerful passive, would synergize perfectly with Lucian's kit. After every spell cast, Lucian can apply his Muramana twice onto his target. While a tier purchase early on might put him behind, he can always skip it, buy a pickaxe, and try to save up enough gold to purchase the entire Monomune on his next base. For runes, run Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. Alternatively, you could take Nimbus Cloak in place of Transcendence and also trade out Legend Bloodline for Alacrity if you choose to build a Blade of the Ruined King as well. Presence of Mind is a must. Just like any champion that builds a Monomune, the synergy is just way too strong. For items, build a Monomune, Berserker's Greaves, Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon, and Immortal Reminder. Lucian's passive was buffed on patch 10.11, making crit builds much more effective on him than before. He deals a stupid amount of damage, especially if he's able to RNG the double crit when diving a carry. That concludes the bot lane builds, so take one last look at the screen, because we're going to wrap it up with the supports next. Glacial Augment Tom Kench has made his return once again. With Guardian losing its bonus movement speed, players are switching back to Glacial Augment. Tom Kench players aren't just using Glacial Augment, however. They're also utilizing Approach Velocity to make it even more difficult to escape from him. Call it the Kench Clench, or whatever you want to call it, but a single slap from his tongue spells death for most summoners out there. After tagging an opponent with a single slow, Tom Kench easily catches up to them with Approach Velocity and then tags them with a Glacial Augment empowered basic attack. And honestly, the rest is history. Like with any champion, you count to three and something magical happens. In Tom Kench's case, he gets to pick up his target and spit them towards his team. For runes, run Glacial Augment, Hextech Flash Traption, Minion Dematerializer, Approach Velocity, Overgrowth, and Bone Plating. For items, you'll build a Bulwark of the Mountain, Mercury Treads, Dead Man's Plate, Knight's Vow, Locket of the Iron Solari, and Gargoyle Stone Plate. The Dead Man's Plate provides Tom Kench even more mobility and an extra slow for good measure. Our final build is Support Elise. Back in the day, greats like Lehens used this build to make their pushes into high elo. The biggest strength of Elise's support are her roams as well as the mix-ups she creates during the draft phase. If a jungler picks Elise and finds they're in a bad matchup, they can hand her over to their support player. Although support Elise does miss out on a bit of damage, her ganks and dives are still extremely oppressive. Make sure to pick up a pair of boots of mobility because you don't want to stay in the bottom lane forever. Support Elise excels at roaming to solo lanes to look for some easy ganks or dives. When tagging along with her jungler, Elise basically makes any dive impossible to fail. She starts off by stunning an enemy, drawing turret aggro, and then dropping it by casting her spider form's E, Repel. For runes, run Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Nullifying Orb, and Water Walking. For item builds, build a Shard of True Ice, Boots of Mobility, Magi's Soul Stealer, Morella Namicon, Leandri's Torment, and Void Staff. All right, that's the end of our support build, so make sure to take one final look at the screen where we've displayed them once again for you guys. 
Thanks so much for watching everyone. Make sure to check out ProGuides.com as well as our YouTube channel for even more informational content just like this. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and like this video so that you can stay updated with any new content that we release. Until next time, best of luck on the rift, summoners. Thank you